Is Google helping the U.S. spy on China in what seems to be the latest blow to already strained relations between the U.S. and China? A state-run newspaper there published a report claiming Google cooperated with the U.S. in espionage efforts. Is it true? And if so, what will it mean for U.S.-China relations? Well, joining me now to talk about it is RT contributor and investigative journalist Wayne Madsen. So, Wayne, the conflict between Google and China seems to be escalating beyond just a Google issue. Uh, the United States has claimed that China is launching a cyber war. War against it, but at the same time, now uh, state-run media in China is saying that the United States is launching a cyber war against China. So, what's really going on here, and who's to blame? Well, I've been talking to some uh, people in Beijing myself, and what they're telling me is, when you look at Google, you see a company with uh, a lot of uncomfortable relationships with U.S. intelligence. We know that. Google uh, set up a, a cooperative agreement with the National Security Agency. We also know that users of Gmail, the uh, Google uh, email uh, offering, uh, found out that there was spyware included that would open up their computer's files to uh, basically to be surveilled and uh, possibly captured by uh, the spyware program that came with Gmail. Uh, I also think it's important to note that the CIA has a venture capital firm called InQtel, which looks for up-and-coming companies to basically try to give them seed money. Uh, we know that Oracle, the big database, Oracle was once the name of a CIA relational database project, which then turned into a huge company called Oracle. Uh, and there's a thought that maybe Google was uh, very similar, that some of its seed money came uh, to it from uh, InQtel, the CI venture capital firm, which is based in the Silicon Valley. So I, I think that uh, the Chinese probably have a lot of reasons to doubt uh, whether Google is uh, merely a benign uh, a search engine or may have uh, some intelligence functions built in. And what about the other way around, the United States claiming that China is launching a cyber war, a cyber war against it. Well, certainly, what we're seeing uh, uh, with intelligence agencies and military uh, commands around the world, they're all now concentrating on cyber warfare, uh, cyber defenses. Uh, what we're seeing is that the power politics are now moving into the realm of cyberspace. I think that spells a very, very bad uh, future for internet freedom. Uh, it, it, I think it, it's going to throw up a lot of uh, issues of uh, internet censorship. And uh, so I think uh, the people who are probably going to suffer are the users of, of the internet in China and possibly the users of the internet here in the United States because uh, there's some thought that Google may be actually censoring certain websites here in this country as well. Anything having to do with 9-11, for example, the 9-11 truth movement, uh, other issues. Uh, uh, you, uh, in some cases, people say, hey, my my uh, website, my offerings on the web don't even show up when I do a Google search. And you know, Sergey Brin, one of Google's co-founders, recently said that he wants Washington, the Obama administration, to take a tougher stance on China. Is that likely to happen? Can Google pressure Washington, especially when tensions between Washington and Beijing are already so strained? I think that's already happening because uh, sources of mine in Beijing are pointing to Larry Summers, the former uh, Treasury Secretary who's now an economic advisor uh, to President Obama. Obama. He's known as a free trader, but now there's a thought that uh, the Obama administration is ad adopting an industrial policy, which is targeting not only China, but as we saw with Toyota and Honda, uh, the Japanese uh, automotive uh, industry as well and their exports to this country. I would note that uh, uh, there's also pressure on China to appreciate the value of the renminbi, the Chinese currency. That's causing a lot of problems between Washington and uh, Beijing. And uh, now there's a big issue when, when Google Google moved its uh, uh, operations to Hong Kong. Apparently, they did not even consult with the Hong Kong government. That puts Hong Kong in a very tenuous position because China has allowed a great deal of uh, autonomy in Hong Kong. But if there's a thought that Hong Kong will become a base for Google's uh, activities, that could bring a lot of undue pressure on Hong Kong. And there are indications that other American firms might follow suit. GoDaddy, the Dell Corporation, uh, might follow suit with what Google did and pull out of China. 
Do you think that's likely to happen, and what would that mean for China? Well, I think if we're looking at a national um, economic policy, an industrial policy now being pushed by the United States, it's quite clear that the U.S. government may be urging these companies to pull out of uh, China. And I think that that uh, means a possible trade war. China holds a lot of our debt. Uh, I don't know uh, what, uh, what that's going to spell for the future, but I think uh, if we're looking at a, a trade war between uh, one of the America's largest trading partners and, and the holder of our, our, much of our debt, that could spell a big problem for the U.S. economy in the long run. So free traders like Larry Summers could be bringing about uh, sort of an apocalyptic uh, situation with uh, the economy of this country. Well, Wayne Madsen, thank you so much for joining me. Google possibly furthering the tensions between China and the United States.